In this next session, I'm going to demonstrate how to use advanced grading or use rubrics in your assignments. Using rubrics, of course, it's a very powerful feature and it enhances the student learning. The students also get to know exactly what's going to be required and also how you're going to be grading the assignments as well as it helps you as the instructor in identifying as to what areas to look for in your grading on your grading specific papers. So what we want to do is we want to create a rubric and just to give an idea as to what it looks like, for example, I have here a rubric. This is computer class, of course, but I have here I'm going to grade this assignment based on formatting. It has multiple criteria, then basic calculations in this Excel spreadsheet, and then all kinds of other various criteria and options. So in this case, the way it works is that instead of you having to put a score like a 92 out of 100 or whatever else there, you can simply click on these boxes as you're reviewing the paper and then the computer will calculate it correctly. So if I chose that, it will update the grade and customize it and tweak it and so on. So basically, the student gets to know what the criteria is and what to do specifically within that criteria. Now, of course, there are more advanced rubrics out there, but this is more for my type of assignment that I was giving to the students. Now, in your case, here's how you create the rubric. You can use an existing paper that you're going to be doing, or you can create a new assignment. It's pretty much the same idea. So if we have the assignment here and we click here under I click on add. Of course, it needs a description. You'd put the description here along with uh, just um, advising the students what they have to do and the requirements and all that type of thing. And then, of course, uh, support files for your assignment and due dates and so on. And then you go here under grade and you say that I'm going to grade this in points, but my grading method, instead of me assigning 92 out of 100 and so on, I'm going to use a rubric for this assignment. So I click here under rubric and then scroll down and pretty much fill out other fields as well. So you can check the other video on designing or defining and configuring assignments for that purpose. And then the next thing that we do is we click on save and display. At this point, it will bring up the rubric configuration page, and we can either use an existing rubric that might be in the system or in this course, and in this case, there is nothing for this course, or we can create a new one. So we can use one from a template. So here's one for uh, the computer for the business course. Or if I go back here, I click on define a new rubric from scratch. So here you could have um, assignment one, you could call this, so you could do rubrics for each assignment or you could do one for your course. Assignment one, put some description so you know what it is. And then the next thing that we do here is that we go to the first thing and this would be our criteria. For example, we could say here, and you could have like a poor, if the research uh, for the topic it was poor and you could say did not find any articles did not put any journals and so on evidence or whatever then we go to the level number two for research and you could say used minimal resources and then you could say not quite or whatever you make uh, something up the next level up for the research as you're evaluating this you have multiple levels that you're evaluating how they did the research and then the last one let's say you want to add another level here and this would be excellent and so on and you could add also different point scales so for at this level if they hit this level you can give them four points if you prefer so this is only one criteria on the topic. The other on the research aspect for this assignment. Now for the next criteria that you would add here, it would be 
the citations. And you could have different levels as well. This would be basically that they cited according to the MLA format or yes or no and all that type of thing, depending on what the paper is. And it's best, again, to use descriptive area. So you could have poor or somewhat and so on. So basically the different levels for citing resources. Then you go, and I'm going to leave these empty at this point for the sake of time. And then you go and add another criteria and you choose So application of learned concepts. You want to make sure the student may be doing everything else uh, correctly, but yet they may not be understanding how that component works or what that paper was about to come to a conclusion or to achieve. So you could say poor and so on and so on. So in any case, we get the point here that you want to add all of these different levels that you are going to assess the students on that paper. So it could be the research of the topic, the citations, the application of the learned concepts, the external resources will be another one, the all kinds of different areas that you want to evaluate them, the style of writing and so on. So then the more that you create here, the better it is the student gets to understand the different areas that you're looking for. Plus, they get penalized less if they missed one small area here. Now, once you uh, scroll down here to the bottom, once we have the rubric ready, we click on Save Rubric and make it ready. Then, the next thing is that it wants some kind of description. It wants us to fill all of these. Or it's saying, Delete them. If you're not going to use them, delete them. So in any case, you of course, you'd fill those out. So we save this and we make it ready. And it's saying, if you're going to have criteria, you need to have more than one level. So. So now that the rubric has been configured, now let's say we want to go and grade this assignment. So we click on View Grade All Submissions. And now when we go to grade this, nothing has been submitted, of course, but let's assume we're going to grade it and a paper was submitted and so on. And you can check the tutorial on how to do grading. But we go here under Grade This Assignment on the little check mark. And let's assume the paper came in and so on. Now to grade it, notice you have these buttons. You don't assign points. And you don't have a place to enter the grade. You simply click on those boxes. And then the grade will be. You can put comments as well. And then you simply press Save Changes. Now based on the boxes that you selected, a grade will be assigned based on the percentage where that fell. So in this case, I got a 85.71, a B plus, because I missed one of the areas here. So this is more effective. So notice I missed this first area here. So it's powerful and it's effective. We highly encourage the faculty to utilize the rubrics in the course. Now when the student goes in to check this, they'll see something very similar next to their grade in the assignment. So that's how the rubrics work. Now, if you have an existing assignment and you want to apply a rubric or create a new rubric to your assignment, your existing assignment, then what you do is if you scroll down here to go to your existing assignment, change some settings to it. So we go here under the assignment, and then we go here under where it says advanced grading. And then Right now, it's configured to use simple direct grading. However, we want to change it to use the rubric. And then it will ask us to create the rubric from scratch for this specific assignment. So that's how the rubrics work, how to apply them to a new assignment, and also how to apply them to an existing assignment.